What is up, YouTube? This is True Dude Sly. Welcome back to Doki Doki Literature Club. We're back into it. Uh, Monica was late this morning for unknown reasons. I really hope we're finally getting into the nitty gritty of this game. It keeps saying at the beginning, not suitable for those who are easily disturbed. I've been trying to find it this whole time, but I haven't been finding anything. But anyway, last time we left off, we... Let's write another poem. Yay. And now basically Monica's late. Blah, blah, blah. Let's get back to it. Uh, sorry, I'm super sorry. Yeah, you're late, Monica. There you are. I didn't mean to be late. I hope you guys weren't worried or anything. Only, I think... S Sayori. There we go. Sayori was worried. Eh? Monica chose the club over her boyfriend after all. So strong willed. B boyfriend? <laughs> what on earth are you talking about? You don't have a boyfriend? Monica quizzically glances at me. Uh, never mind that. What held you up anyway? Uh, well, my last period today was study hall. To be honest, uh, I kind of just lost track of time. Uh, <laughs> It makes no sense, though. I wouldn't know, honestly. You would have heard the bell ring, at least. You must not have heard it since I was practicing piano. Piano? I wasn't aware you played music as well, Monica. I don't really. I kind of just started recently. I've always wanted to learn piano. That's so cool. I'll say. Wow. How about those? I blew before I started. Jeez. Uh, you should play something for us, Monica. That's... Monica looks at me. Maybe once I get a little better. I will. Yay! Oh, by the way, I, I probably should say this earlier. But, um, I dearly apologize for Far Cry's audio. Of... The heck? I'm hearing some weird background noise over here. I've got a headphone off my ear. Right now. The frick is that noise? Anyway, I don't know what happened with the Far Cry voice audio. Very strange. Very strange. Anyway, let's get back into it quickly. Uh, yay. That sounds cool. I'd also look forward to it. Is that so? In that case, I won't let you down. Sweet. Uh, Monica smiles sweetly. Uh, I didn't mean any pressure or anything like that. Uh -huh, don't worry. I've been practicing a whole lot recently, and I'd really love the chance to share once I'm ready. I see. In that case, best of luck. Thanks. So I didn't miss anything, did I? Not really. I chose to leave out Sayori's mischievous escapes. I'm sure Natsuki will end up complaining to her anyway. It looks like some everyone has already settled down. Sayori somehow already finished her entire cookie. It's a small, it's a cookie, dude. I'm sure it's quick to finish. Yuri's back to her book, and Natsuki disappeared into the closet. Oh, Sayori. Sorry, Sayori suddenly comes up to me. I'm gonna go get some supplies from another classroom. Want to come with me? Supplies. What for? Well, you know how the festival's coming up. Me and Monica were gonna make some posters and stuff. So I need to find some crayons, markers, and glue sticks. Huh, I see. Sure, I'll go with you. Yay! Say so alright. I like you. You are nice. Okay, Monica. We'll be back soon. Oh, are you going with me to get some supplies? Yeah, I do kind of feel awkward just trying to say my name in there. I will. I'm not going to complain. There's no need to trouble yourself. I'd be happy to go with him. But, uh, but I wanted to go. So much fun exploring empty classrooms and stuff. <laughs> okay, okay. I was just... It was just a suggestion. Blech. See if you can find poster paper too. Okay? 
Shouldn't you be buying this at the store? Okay. Ready? Yeah, let's go. Jeez. Uh, Sayori and I exit the clubroom. I follow behind as Sayori hums and skips around the hallway. Honestly, feels like I'm talk taking a kid to the mall or something. Sayori finds pleasure in the sum in the simplest things sometimes. Is that so uh, wrong? Hey Sayori. What exactly are we doing for the festival anyway? I'm not sure how you would make an event out of literature. <laughs> Me and Monica have it all planned out. Don't you worry. Is that so? Yep. We're gonna do a poetry performance. Uh oh. A performance? Of what kind? Well, everyone is gonna take turns on stage and recite their favorite poems. Ah. That sounds kind of dull. Dude, I'm not thinking about it the right way at all. It's not just about reading poems, it's about performing them. Like you say the lines of the poem like, Between my feet, the last remaining flower beckons to me. I twist the stem, freeing it from its clinging roots, caressing the final joyous moments between my fingers. But to what end have I summoned this joy? For now, when I look in every direction, the once propos prosperous field before me is but a barren wasteland. Like that. That was nice. Sayori, how do I put this? I'm sure it's just me, but it's impossible for me to take you seriously when you talk like that. Eh. You meanie. I'm working super hard on this, you know? Ah, I know, I know. I just meant that it's pretty unordinary contrast to your cute self. Ah, don't say that, it's embarrassing. But I guess that means I'm doing a good job. Yeah, I guess so. Ah, I'm so excited. The festival is going to be so much fun. Sayori spins herself around in the hallway again. Hey, this classroom over here is empty. Let's begin the mission. The mission, eh? It's been a long time since I spent time with Sayori like this. But in the end, she hasn't changed one bit. She's nothing but a ball of sunshine, drawing happy vibes from the world around her. It's pretty nostalgic feeling for me. As the years went by, I began to hold myself up in my room more and more. So going adventuring with Sayori brings out a special sort of Feeling, I forgot I had in me. Sorry about that, I had to go get rid of some of my mucus. Eh, stupid stuff. The two of us enter the classroom. Sayori heads straight to the closet and I follow. Let's see what we have in here. Crayons. Sayori pulls out a box of, pulls a box of, bleh, pulls a box full of crayons. No. No, not the haunting. Not now. A box full of crayons off the shelf. They're the best brand, too. They're kind of dirty, though. Sayori starts pulling various crayons out of the box, reading the color names. Alright, that's one down. Don't get distracted. We still need to find... Wait, I'm looking for my favorite color. Fine, fine. Then at least move aside so I can look for the poster paper. Ah, uh, I dropped one by accident. Smack. Huh? Siori bends over and smacks her forehead right onto the shelf. She falls to the floor and the crayons spill all over her lap. Ow, 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 ow. You okay? My forehead. Siori clutches her forehead. Jeez, Siori. That's just like you, isn't it? Come on, let me see. Since Sayori is sitting on the floor, I grab her by the waist and pull her out of the closet. You have to move your hands, Sayori. But it hurts. Just do it for a second. Huh. Sayori slowly releases her hands from her forehead. I have no comment on any of this. I gently brush her bangs to the side. Ow. Sorry. 
There's a huge red mark on the center of her forehead. The bump is starting to form as well. Man, that's gonna swell up. I should find you some ice. Where would I even find ice around this time? I think that's a cold drink will do. You don't have to. I'm fine with looking like a unicorn. <laughs> even wincing from the pain series makes a silly joke. What are you saying? I'll be right back, okay? Okay. Alright. Uh, one moment. <clears throat> My nose is not making this recording very easy. I pat Sarah on the shoulder and run into the hall. Run out into the hallway. I look. I locate the nearest vending machine. What should I get? It doesn't really matter since it will be used as an ice pack rather than a drink. I know Sarah likes apple juice, so I purchased that one. In just a moment, I'm already returning to the classroom where I left Sayori. And she's still in the same position. Mm. She has one palm on her forehead and is using the other hand to clumsily scoop crayons back into the box. At least they were all written in the wrong spots before I spilt them. Sayori, here. I hand Sayori the bottle of apple juice. <laughs> it's weird. It's nice and cold. Sayori opens the cap and starts drinking from it. Sayori, what are you doing? It's for your forehead, idiot. Ah, sorry, I forgot. <laughs> Sayori, you're nice. How hard did you hit your head? Sayori places the bottle against the bump of her head. It stings. Just bear with it, it'll feel better soon. Looks like you cleaned up most of the crayons, so that's good. Hey, this kind of reminds me, reminds you of growing up, doesn't it? Um, what? What do you mean? You know how we used to play outside all the time? I would always try to keep up with you. You were kind of oblivious in some ways. Like, I usually fall, fell behind or had trouble climbing on the things you did. But sometimes, when I tried to do things I couldn't, I would get myself hurt. I'd fall and scrape myself or get a bump. And I would start crying real hard. Uh -huh. and you would all And you would rush over as quickly as you could. You would try really hard to get me to stop crying. It's almost like you blamed yourself and were afraid of getting in trouble if someone found out. Even though it really wasn't your fault at all, you know? Did I really do that? Yeah, you don't remember? Come to think of it, maybe I do remember a bit. I guess I was always focused on my games that I didn't pay attention enough to you. So in a way, it was my fault. Kind of like this time, too. If I wasn't rushing you out of the closet, you probably wouldn't have hit your head. I don't think you realize, but you're always thinking about other people. Even after all these years. You're rushing to help me, even though I'm just being clumsy. You're really a sweetheart. Don't call me that. Yeah. And I don't really do this kind of thing all the time. I guess when it comes to you, it just feels natural. Before I even know it, I'm treating you like that. I guess that's what happens when you've been friends for so long. Really? Maybe you're right. I'm so glad that nothing's changed between us. You think it'll be like this forever? Forever. If I'm honest to myself, there's no telling where we'll each end up for college or even or after that. So it wouldn't be fair for me to make any promises. But I hope so. It's been this long already, right? I can't imagine you ever changing, so my hopes are up. I'm so happy. Siri has a whimsical expression in her eyes. We remain silent for a moment. She's so silly and clumsy on the outside that when I see her deep in thought like this, it makes me not want to disturb her. I guess we should go back. I don't want to worry Monica, you know? Good luck with that. She's going to see your forehead either way. Not if I hunt it under my bangs. Well, it's not there, so... Ah, uh, she clutches her forehead again. Don't stand up so fast after hurting yourself. Uh, well, I guess it's too late now. Anyway, let's go. 
Is Sayori... I follow Sayori out of the classroom. Sayori plays with her bangs to try to hide the bump, but without much success. In a moment, we make it back to the club room. Ah, you're back. Good timing. I was about ready to start with sharing our poems. Eh? Sayori, your forehead. She's fine, don't worry about it. I was playing with the crayons and smacked my forehead into the shelf. Eh? <laughs> well, anyway. Were you able to find everything we needed? Uh-huh, I have it right. Eh? Sayori, Sayori frantically glances around herself. Ah, I forgot all this stuff. Calm down, Sayori. I have it all right here. I found the poster paper, too. Ahaha. <laughs> Sounds like you ended up doing all the work. Ah, well, Sayori. I failed to come up with an excuse for Sayori. I made it an adventure. Yeah, that. Ah, okay, okay. In any case, good work. We'll start working on the posters tonight. Me too. Okay, everyone. Are you ready to share your poems? Yes, I should grab mine. Oh, gosh. As I make sure the crayon box is closed tightly, I return to my seat. Okay. Let's hope I can get through all four of these people in this episode. Okay, say alright. I really love your poems. I can't believe you've been hiding these from me. Eh, I'm not hiding anything. But your poems are so good. Yesterday and this one's too. You can't tell me you haven't done this before. I mean, you're really the one who feels that way, so. Eh, no way. Not even Natsuki? I guess Natsuki's the least likely to admit how much she likes something. I don't think it's that. What do you mean? Well, I guess I'll be honest about it. It's a lot easier to write poems when I'm thinking about you. Eh, eh, ah, wah, 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 wah. Stop thinking weird things, idiot. I just think that you're really, you're a really expressive person, I guess. Am I supposed to write poems about my stupid life? These somehow make everything in your life an adventure, even the little things. Like cooking. Let's not talk about that. Eh. So yeah. I guess what I'm saying is that I can feel more feelings through you than I can through myself. We have that kind of weird connection. <laughs> That's weird. That is weird. It's your fault for getting in my business all the time. Eh. I don't know if I understand. Sigh. You never understand when I try to explain things to you. Do you, Sayori? I pat Sayori's head. Ah, hey. I'm not a kid, you know. You sure about that? Mm, maybe. Sayori starts fiddling with her pencil between her hands. Hey, will you give me your poem? I kind of want to keep it. Huh? Why? Because, well, it's the first time you've written something for me. <laughs> Sayori, you completely misunderstood. I didn't write this for you. Eh. <laughs> Sigh. Are you even listening to me anymore? Well, whatever. I'll give it to you when we go home. Really? Snap. I broke my pencil. Sayori hastily bends down to pick up the piece she dropped. But being inattentive of, of her surroundings, she bumps right into me. So, sorry. It's fine. It's fine. I'll get it for you. I bend down to pick up the broken pencil. Siri so clutches the desk beside her to support herself. Knees shaking. I'm a little clumsy today. <laughs> Let's sit down, Sayori. Yeah. I grab Sayori's arm and help her sit at the desk. Anyway, I still haven't read your poem. Oh. Sorry, I forgot about that. It was not as good as yours. Jeez, don't worry. I'm sure I'll like it. Okay, here we go. Bottles. I pop off my scalp like the lid of a cookie jar. It's the secret place where I keep all my dreams. Little balls of sunshine all rubbing together like a bundle of kittens. I reach inside with my thumb and forefinger and pluck one out. It's warm and tingly. But there's no time to waste. I put it 
in a bottle to keep it safe, and I put the bottle on the shelf with all other bottles. Happy thoughts, happy thoughts, happy thoughts, happy thoughts, happy thoughts, and bottles all in a row. My collection makes me lots of friends. Each bottle, ah, oh, come on, this is a long one. Each bottle, a starlight to make amends. Sometimes my friend feels a certain way. Dawn comes a, dawn come, down comes a bottle to save the day. Night after night, more dreams. Friend after friend, more bottles. Deeper and deeper my fingers go, like exploring a dark cave, discovering the secrets, hiding in the nooks and crannies, digging and digging, scraping and scraping. I will dust off my bottle top caps. It doesn't feel like a time elapsed. My empty shelf could use some more. My friends look through my locked front door. Finally, all done, I open in, I open up, and in come my friends. And they come in such a hurry. Do they want my bottles that much? I frantically pull them from the shelf one after the other, holding them out to each and every friend. Each and every bottle. But every time I let one go, it shatters against the tile between my feet. Happy thoughts, happy thoughts, happy thoughts, and shards all over the floor. They were supposed to be for my friends, my friends who aren't smiling. They're all shouting, pleading, something. But all I hear is echo, 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 echo inside my head. Holy crap. Sewer, did you really write this? Of course I did. Didn't I tell you yesterday I was going to write the best poem ever? Yeah, but... I mean, I didn't expect something like this coming from you. Monica taught me a whole lot. And I've been really in touch with my feelings recently. I see that. It's almost kind of creepy. Creepy? Well, not exactly. Maybe because I'm so used to you being cheerful. Well, never mind. I'm thinking too hard about it. The point is... It came out good. You should be proud of it. Aw, thanks. I feel like... I feel like it was meant to express myself this way. I was meant. It even helps me understand my own feelings a little bit better. Writing is like magic. You've gotten pretty passionate about this, huh? I hope you keep it up. Yeah, writing's the best. I'm gonna keep writing until I die. Uh, don't get ahead of yourself. Sayori always had a habit of getting obsessed with something before dropping it no more than a week later. I wonder if this is one of those times. Seeing the passion in her eyes makes it hard for me to be pessimistic. Okay, here we go. God darn it. Okay, I'm going to leave this episode here because my nose situation is really not helping at the moment. I'm going to properly do something about this and whatever. You don't need to know what I'm doing with my life. But anyway, that's going to be the end of this episode here. Thank you all so much for watching this video. If you all enjoyed, if at all, do all the YouTube stuff down below. If you have any games that you want me to play, please leave them in the comments below. I look forward to new experiences in gaming. Thank you all once again, and I'll see you all next time. And on a final note, I will be playing God of War for the PlayStation. I got to get something to record of that, though. And the Marvel Spider-Man for the PlayStation 4. I will be doing those. See you guys. <laughs> See you all next time.